today. From Orchard Park, New York. It's week 17 of the NFL on EA Sports. Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills taking on Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. We are just about four miles off the shore of Lake Erie at Bill Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. The folks in Buffalo love their Bills, and a moment ago, they entered to the delight of this sold-out crowd. They're set for football as their Bills will do battle with the Miami Dolphins. with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at the Bills entering play here. They've certainly found their groove of late. Winners of five in a row. And I think the sky's the limit for this team. They're playing the best football that they've played in a long time. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Dolphins, they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. Jason Sanders to kick off for Miami. And we are underway in Buffalo. Taken about seven yards deep. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Out comes the offense for the Bills, led by their quarterback at six foot five. That's Josh Allen. Partner, do we still count this as the holiday season? A little bit of a gray area, but I think you can. Okay, well, we just passed it, right? Well, the gifts keep coming to our guy, don't they? Well, they do. I mean, think about this now. Clinch the playoff spot. Offensive player of the week in week 16. I think he's going to keep going. I think he's going to keep firing away. I don't think they pull back at all. Yeah, and everybody for them rounding into form right now. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. incomplete. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out. The next man steps up and plays well. But that starts with the organization itself all the way through. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Awesome. The number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. Yeah, this time it's going to come from the middle linebacker because watching the linemen, it seemed to me that they thought he was going to drop back into pass protection, but he surprised them and came on the blitz instead and had a pretty clear run to the quarterback. As we check the next-gen stats, you'll see he had precious little time to do anything with the football there. So after the sack, Allen and the Bills with work to do on third and long. From the gun, it's Allen. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up work there. They were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football, got to him, and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. They'll be led out by the second quarterback chosen back in April from Alabama to a tongue of Iloa. And it felt like in watching the game tape, he got everyone involved last week. He know? was a manager. He really was. That's a great way to put it because they ran the ball some, they threw it accurately, one touchdown pass, so he didn't you know, break the bank doing that, but he didn't throw any interceptions. That's the bottom line. That's why a defense loves a quarterback like that. Doesn't and put them in bad situations. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 14 carries, 87 yards. And as we discovered and talked with the coaches See, prior to the game, going up against a team that struggled against the run has only emboldened them to run the football more. I expect 40 to 50 carries in this game.
They'll run now with Gaskin. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Tua looking to throw on third and two. And it's caught by Parker. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tua to Parker there for the Miami first. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. This is Gaskin on the carry. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Nice play there by Ed Oliver. That's why he went ninth overall when he came out of Houston back in 2019. Here's Gaskin. And he'll be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 25. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Out of the gun on third down. Here's Tua. It's complete to Grant. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 12-yard line. 18 big yards on that one, and a Miami first. You always worry about those small receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. handoff it's Gaskin and here he'll get it down to the seven give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down a quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game brings up second and after the pickup of five here's second and five here's tongue of Ilo to throw and he will take it in for the Dolphins touchdown Devontae Parker, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins are going to take a first quarter lead. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen, and it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. What are y'all doing? Jason Sander is to kick off for Miami. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this carries into the end zone. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. 
So here come the Bills out for their second drive. Even though they might not find the number one seed next to their name come playoff time, there's not going to be very many teams, if any, entering the playoffs on the kind of run they're on their own. And I love that word, hot, because every team in the league wants to go into the playoffs on that uptick. Because a lot of the time, you sort of notice to the rest of the league that, hey, we're the team you need to deal with. You're, we're the team that's going to be a real problem for you. And if they can continue this streak, they could very well be that team and gain that confidence that they're seeking as they head to the playoffs. And confidence, that's the word I would use from our meetings with them. They said we're playing our best football right now. It is showing. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Dolphin seven, Bills nothing. Allen from the gun on third down, going deep for Diggs. They got his man complete, and he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that's how you convert on third down with an explosive gain of 34. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. About three yards there to the 27. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> Meeting the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Too much. Too much. He might. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should be something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. A shotgun handoff now to Yeldon. And he's going to be taken down here with a he big flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. Yeah, let's go. And he is out of bounds right around he the 10-yard line. First target, first catch, and a first down. She might. That certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the she going, though. should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something out. right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And incomplete uh, as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball. I, I did too. I started drinking some of this motherfucking uh, scotch and shit. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he is into the end zone for the Buffalo touchdown. And I just got up. My daughter woke me up. She might. And yeah, my daughter woke me up. She up there playing this goddamn um, Nintendo Switch. I got like, some little Mario's and shit. Like three or four games of Mario. She been going back and forth playing on and she woke me up. Yeah, I know. I seen it. I can see what you on. As long as you got your shit on, you can turn it off if you want, but you don't want niggas fucking with you. You can turn your shit off if you don't want niggas fucking with you. Your, uh, the status. 
Or it's always going to let motherfuckers know what you're doing. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21 yard line. Now you can turn your shit off and tell motherfuckers, we'll have motherfuckers like where they can't hear you, they can't see you online, or none of that shit. That's like if you want to watch movies and you try to motherfuckers thinking that you're still online. Right now I'm playing this little madness shit real quick. I might jump back on the division in a minute. That's why I asked you, I, I, I asked of Madden. That's why I try to ask you. I try to hit you up and ask you, like, was you playing um, campaign or was you playing the um, person versus person? Oh, yeah, that shit tight. Like, I'm playing that shit now on Harden. I always go through that shit once and then I go through it again after I beat it. Now I'm going through it on Harden. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. What part you on? It's a seven yard gain and good enough to move the chains. What part are you on? What part are you on? Now we're first and ten at the eleven. Throw with Tagovailoa toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Devontae Parker was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Now a handoff here to his running back, and finding room to work, he's down to the two-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. The who? And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes first you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball. What's the first part? Oh, you mean when the um when you, before you start going to the board? And he'll give it here to his running back. And he takes it into the end zone for the Dolphin touchdown. Miles Gaskin. As the first half is winding down, yeah, you start talking to dude and shit, and then the motherfuckers come in and you got to hide in the bathroom and jump out the window. Before they attempt the extra point, what a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front, and now you see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Yeah, then you got to go through the bar and you got to go around and hide and shit, go through the building, meet up with old boy, your contact. You can, you can kill everybody if you want to, or you can try to go secretly and don't kill nobody and just run straight through the building. You gotta, you can kill dude down in the basement. You gotta make sure you go down in that basement. He like, uh, he could, he could give up y'all locations and shit if y'all, if you don't kill him. Returning it, Isaiah McKenzie. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25 yard line. Come on. Offense ready to go for their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a timeout taken. 
Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Allen going to throw. They go with the screen. It's Yeldon. And he's going to lose you. It should be backed up to the 25. Are you serious? Well, from the passer. for roughing the passer and mm -hmm. I've seen this before on a screen pass not only are you rushing the passer you're rushing him deeper than normal and I think a little frustration kicks in at the end you're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't he's going to go deep for Beasley and that's going to be too high out of bounds and incomplete so we've come upon halftime here in week 17 hey hold on for a second bro I'll click back on the second one. I'm done with this. Halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon. Thank you as always. Welcome into our final regular season edition of our halftime report. Playoff lives hanging in the balance as we take you around the NFL one final time. We'll start over in Tampa, an NFC South matchup between Atlanta and Tampa Bay. And that one getting close to halftime with the Falcons out in front. Todd Gurley has a touchdown run. From there, we head to the Big Apple, more specifically to MetLife Stadium in Jersey to check on the Giants. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Dallas Cowboys. Daniel Jones throwing the football well. He has three touchdown passes. Lastly, let's motor up to the Motor City. See what's happening with the Lions at home at Ford Field. And it's the visiting Minnesota Vikings who have the lead in that one at halftime. Adam Thielen, two touchdown catches in that first half alone. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. This is Jakeem Grant. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Dolphins take over first and 10. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Now, right now, they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 26. Now, the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Brady. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. He's been the early part of his career in San Francisco, sharing the backfield and sharing the ball. What you really want with him, open space and make sure he's touching it because he can take it from zero to the end zone in a very short amount of time. Two and now on first down. Going deep here for Parker. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Going to give this time to the tailback. And again, this Buffalo defense there and run support to stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. That's caught by the Notre Dame man. It's Durham Smythe. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first.
So it looks like the offense isn't going anywhere. They're going to go for it on fourth and seven. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. Brought in over the middle by Grant. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Well, we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 42-yard line. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Another run with Gaskin. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 yards there, first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. here on first down. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. The intended receiver was Jakeem Grant. And that'll bring up second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bills' 18-yard line. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The sack there by Trent Murphy. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Sanders' kick is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to 7. Bill, 7. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. So here's the Bills offense now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. The pass to Brown as he holds it in. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Brings up third and three. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And the throw there going to be incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. And the Bills send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. Returnable for Grant. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, 9 on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. To a tongue of Iloa in the offense heading back out. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well 
but not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you judge how big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agree with me. That's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Matt Collins, the intended target, but now it's third down. From the gun, it's Tua. He's going to let it go again. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jordan Poyer. And it's a big turnover there on the final play of the quarter. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly, down two scores. He's got it complete to Diggs, right side. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. throw is incomplete. Intended for Dawson Knox. Incomplete. It's now second and ten. They work again from the 38 on second and ten. Throwing again. Allen. He's going deep for Brown. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. The Bills on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And he's able to find Diggs. The 20. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Stephon Diggs. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Bills have cut it to within a score. Well, for as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you're looking for proof of his speed, Next Gen stat shows that he was traveling just over 21 miles an hour there. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And this will be a touchback as Grant opts not to return it. And as this offense makes their way back out, it's AFC playoff race time as we give you a look. And it's all come down to this, hasn't it? Final week of the regular season. As this year's playoffs play out anything like the regular season has gone, could be in for a wild and fun month of January. And we can break the rules because we can look ahead. All right, there's not a coach out there that's ever said to their team, all right, let's look three, three weeks down the road. It's always right here, right now. Forget that. Think about what the playoffs are going to look like. The teams that we see that are already in, the teams that are trying to get in, we could have some great matchups. Now a handoff looking right. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. He's going to let one go deep for Parker. It's caught inside the 25. 
And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Anyone still wondering about Tua's arm strength here in his rookie season? Wonder no more. That was a rocket. And you'd think on third down, they'd just be looking for something right beyond the sticks. And I think they caught the defense flat-footed as a result because they decided they were going to take a shot right there, and it ended up being a big play. And you can see in the next-gen stats that one 62 yards in the air. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Brings up second and one at the six-yard line. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now they try the right side here. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Not enough there for a first. No gain as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Mike Gesicki with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Dolphins add on to their lead. Sanders on for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So the drive there took six plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Jason Sanders to kick off for Miami. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Stop just shy of the 25 with a penalty marker down. Here's the call. Defense. Hey, baby, this ain't good enough for us. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. What a difference a week makes. Last week, he hit on over 80% of his passes. This week, he's down under 50%. What do you see as the difference? Well, I think we're used to seeing a drop. If someone's over 80%, they're not going to hold that number, not in this league. But a drop under 50%, that just tells me that the defense has spent a lot of extra time on game films and came up with a really good plan to try and chip away at his timing. A short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. And I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Dolphins get the football in great field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none. Yes, exactly right. And out come the Dolphins now. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. And to give this time to the tailback. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Now a handoff here to a 
his running back. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Out of the shotgun, Breida. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. They get nine yards back on the run there. They're going to have a much more makeable third and two. Uh, that's the simple question. Why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is going to have the first down. Good job, good job. And that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. It's a game of four, and that should just about seal the deal. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Oh, now look at this. They're lining up to add three more. A little insult to injury here late in the game. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So for Miami, it's an 11th win of the year as they'll finish the regular season at 11-5. And, and now they'll await the final seeding for the playoffs ahead. Meanwhile, for the Bills, despite the loss here, it was a splendid regular season as they'll finish at 12-4. And, and now we'll wait to see what the future holds for them this January. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.